have and have always had such a great trust in them and have gotten such amazing support. But customer service is really on it and they get back to you within the hour. We wanted to have the reliability and the support system that Cask offered us. At the Craft Brewers Conference, they invited us out to do a little extended extended education and we went down to Tivoli and, and, and we went through some more stuff there. And it's an open line of communication and, and we really appreciate it. Well, let's, uh, we might as well just kick it off. I guess the biggest question, dissolved oxygen pickup versus total package oxygen. TPO includes headspace and it's really the number that matters for your shelf life. You know, if you do dissolved oxygen pickup, that's just from the filler. Um, and if you're doing an unshaken, you're really just pulling uh, the oxygen pickup within the beer itself and you're not factoring in that headspace, which um, is where the bulk of your oxygen pickup is, is going to come from or it's the most difficult parameter to kind of dial in and, and minimize. Um, yeah, when you're, like, when you're troubleshooting oxygen pickup, you really want to start isolating variables. So you're going to do, uh, when you first start, you're going to do a tank measurement, see where your baseline is. Um, and then anything you're adding in between uh, the bright tank and the, the finished can, you need, to, you need to isolate. So if you're doing uh, insulated brewer's hose, um, between the bright tank and the, the manifold or the connection to the filling line, um, you want to have a sample port in there so that you can, you can pull oxygen me uh, measurements from that. Um, and you even have to try different hoses. So your, your hose end connections, your gaskets, all of those need to be tested um, because they do wear out. If you're high with your oxygen at our manifold, there's really nothing that we can do within the filling setup um, to reduce that number. Um, so start from there and work forward um, to really dial those numbers in. Uh, the first stage in the line is, is the rinsing of the cans. One spot that a lot of people don't think about is where they might be picking up some oxygen in their cans is the oxygen that's in those water droplets or in the sanitizer droplets. You can do the oxygenated water instead of just city water, but also having some of the water droplets clear out. A lot of people, when you're, when you're doing the CO2 pre-purge, they just think more is better. Um, that's not the case. We're, uh, we're filling from the bottom of the can up, so we really only need that bottom quarter of the can to be filled with CO2. So we're relying on the physical characteristics of CO2 and that it's heavier than air to displace the air. If you come out with a high velocity or at a high pressure, you're going to bounce off the bottom and you're going to create turbulence where that CO2 mixes in with, with the air and it doesn't have time for the CO2 to actually settle to the bottom of the can before we start filling with beer. So it's a really low flow. Um, generally, you're kind of around that six to eight PSI mark, um, just so that we're purging out that bottom quarter of the can. Um, and then, then what we're doing is once we go into the fill station, we're, we're filling with beer into that CO2. Um, with, with our fill valves, what we do is we create foam at the beginning of that fill cycle, so that we're creating foam into the CO2, and then we're filling with beer underneath it. So, you think of the layers that we're creating in the can, we're kind of creating those pr uh, protective barriers um, that are preventing your, uh, your beer coming into contact with any oxygen. Um, you guys have all been kind of flirting around with the, the cap on foam and that dome foam. That's, that's really your, your critical success factor when it comes to preventing oxygen from getting into the can is having no space in that can for air to sit. So you really want to ride the line of the dome foam to the point where you're almost spilling beer down the side of the can, um, but you're not. Um, and then when we leave the fill head, um, when we go in to apply the lid, uh, the underlid gassing is the final piece to the puzzle. Uh, when I'm looking at the, uh, the can, just as it's getting the lid put on, I'm looking right as the lid is attached, and I'm just looking for a little divot, a little deformation in the, in the foam. Uh, not piercing the surface. Because if the CO2 is on high enough that it's actually piercing the foam and flipping it up, you're injecting oxygen into it. So I want to see it just high enough that it's, it's causing a little divot, but not actually breaking that surface of foam. That's where I found seems to be the best for a visual cue on, on where it should be set. Um, in terms of on the measurement side of things, um, once you do pull a can off the line, you want to be measuring that as soon as possible. Um, if there's a little bit of residual yeast in there, it's going to start consuming that oxygen. So kind of outside of 15 minutes, you're going to start seeing your numbers drop and it's going to mislead you in terms of your dissolved oxygen. Um, things that you want to do, you want to be shaking the can for three to five minutes 
If you can do it, get a, a little shaking table to do it. So you're taking the human component out of it so that you're having a baseline that's consistent um, and making sure you're just kind of walking through those same uh, SOPs for each, each measurement. So when you grab a can off the line, you want to be putting it onto that shaking table right away, setting it for three minutes or five minutes, um, letting it run its course, but then being there ready to take it off and putting it in the can piercer and being uh, systematic with that every time that you do it so that you have a baseline that you're going off of and then when you make adjustments on the machine you're not having any um, measurement errors that are going to throw you off and, and maybe you're going to have a little bit higher or lower auction pickup but you think it's actually a correlation to an adjustment you made but it's just because you waited for a little bit longer to actually measure the can. Um, so little things like that can make a big difference so that you can have that, that standard reading every time.